Hello, my name is Yogo Jackson and I'm a 3D artist working at The Mill London. Today, we are going to text your coffee machine, one of those sleek product pack shot for brand advertising. First, I'm going to prepare this asset for Didu in Maya. As I want a high resolution textures for this asset, I'm going to split it in three UDIMs. Now, Didu doesn't support UDIMs just yet, but I will show you some tips and my workflow to make it work. First, let's assign some ID colors to our mesh. I will use the Didu Material Manager in Maya to assign those colors as it's a great and easy tool and works well with the suite in terms of shader assignment. I have named every part of this asset with what kind of shader it's going to use to make it easier for me to assign some IDs. Let's first assign the Chrome ID. Once I applied an ID, I usually hide the objects to have a clearer vision of what I have left to assign. Now, I'm going to copy the type of shader I put at the end of the mesh name and do a research for it so I can assign an ID to all the objects that have this type of shader in their name. Once we have all the IDs assigned, let's unhide our objects. Now, we are going to combine each UDIM group to have only one mesh by UV tile. I usually duplicate my original group and combine in this one to always keep my original non-combined mesh. Let's rename them properly with a UDIM number corresponding to the UVs. This will help us later on to output maps from Didu and have them work straight away in Arnold with UDIMs. We will now bake our ID maps with Turtle. Turtle is a powerful baking tool inside of Maya. It will allow you to bake ID maps as well as the ambient occlusion map that Didu requires. You can find Turtle in your render settings in the renderer section. If you can't find it here, make sure you have the Turtle plugin loaded in your plugin manager. Let's put Turtle into baking mode and set it up. Make sure to uncheck bilinear filter as this will destroy your ID maps when doing the edge extension for some reason. We are going to put the output to albedo to only get the color information of our shaders. Now, one important thing for Didu to work with multiple meshes, it requires all our UVs to be into the 0 to 1 tile or the 1001 UDIM. For this, we are going to move our UVs into the first tile. It will make it easier to bake as well. Let's bake our first ID map. We can see that our mesh is not smoothed. We will smooth it in Arnold at render time using the cut clock smooth option in Arnold. But for our mesh to look the same in 3D, we will have to smooth it beforehand. I usually only smooth it with one division as it's enough to have a good representation of it in 3D and have the UV smooth as well. Let's rebake our IDs. When saving the maps, we will make sure to put the UDIM into the name too. We will now bake the ambient occlusion map. For this, we will change the settings in Turtle to ambient and enable the final gather. Put skylight into GI environment and make sure the sky color is set to white. Now, if we render it, we will see a multicolor AO pass. This is because it is taking into consideration our ID colors. To avoid this, we will assign a white lamber to our geometry. Here we go. Let's put the background to white and increase our ray count in the final gather settings. Remember, the higher quality your input maps are, the higher quality your result in Didu will be. Let's do this for our three meshes. Now that we have our input maps, let's export our OBJ file. For Didu to understand that we have three different meshes in our OBJ, they will need to be parent of the world in your outliner and the group option needs to be checked in your OBJ export options. 
point group needs to be unchecked. This will allow us to import only one OBJ file in DDoo and have the three meshes inside it with the correct names. One last thing that I'm going to do before getting into the suite is put the logos and small details in our ID map using vectors files so we can use them as material IDs as well. Now that we have all our maps and OBJs, it's time for some DDoo action. Let's load our OBJ and our maps. I'm doing it manually here to make sure that our UDIM name files are loaded under our correct UDIM mesh group. You can also use the quick load input as multi to load maps all at once. We will bake the rest of our maps in the 3D baker. These maps will help DDoO detect where the edges of our mesh are using the curvature and enable us to create masks depending on orientation thanks to the object space map and the gradient map. One thing specific to this tutorial is the fact that we won't actually need those maps to create wear and tear masks or for grime and grudge as we will want to have a clean look for our product. Let's set the resolution for our project and texel density. We are going to work in 4K which will give us a lot of 4K maps at the end. This is going to be a lot but I don't mind as in Arnold we will be able to convert them into TX files and it will be really fast for Arnold to interpret them. I usually keep my texel density to half the resolution, but it really depends on the scale of your object. Let's put the Arnold profile to Arnold linear, so we have a roughness slot instead of glossiness, and let's click create. As we can see, 3do is going to go through our different meshes, bake the maps we want. And when this is finished, we can finally start the fun part in Didu. You can see that our three mesh groups are loaded and you can isolate them in 3DO by pressing the spacebar and changing which mesh group you are viewing. This will allow us to make sure we are working with the right mesh when assigning shaders. Let's put the base for our materials. We'll just assign the shaders for now and we'll come to tweak them later. To do so, press and hold the C key on your keyboard to reveal the ID map and hold Shift and C while left clicking on the color you want to assign a shader to. This will open a smart material library where you can find hundreds of pre-made material based on real scan data, which is the real powerful core of Didu. Let's bring a reference of our object and look at what different shaders we have. We can see some plastic with a sparkling pattern as well as some grainy black plastic and some chrome. Let's pick the pattern plastic smart material for our main body part. Let's quickly change the color of it by changing the color in the albedo tab. Let's add other materials so we have a base for all our shaders and we will come and tweak them later. Now that we have all our basic materials applied, we are going to tweak them. Let's tweak the main body part. First, let's remove those extra layers of edge wear and tear or dust as we are not going to want this for a clean product shot where the goal is to have a product as clean as possible looking brand new. Let's reduce the scale of it as well by adjusting the scale slider. We can rotate the light to see how the light reacts to our surface. This is too glossy, so let's go in our roughness tab and increase the roughness. For our PVC side, let's get rid of those scratches. We will do this by reducing the texture intensity of the material that is blending the texture detail of the scan with the reflectance value. Let's keep a tiny bit of detail in there as it always adds a bit of realism. Once we got all our materials, let's see how they react in different light environments. Because all the materials are based on PBR scan data, which stands for physical base rendering, they will react as expected in any type of environment. Let's export our maps now. Open the exporter. We should be on Arnold Linear for export targets. This will export our maps and make them ready to use in Arnold in Maya using the color management workflow. We will export our maps in Arnold sRGB2 for use with Arnold's gamma correction settings without Maya's color management. 
What this does is simply Gamma correcting specific maps for them to be direct plug and play in Maya. Let's make sure that our name includes the UDIM number so Maya can recognize straight away that we're dealing with UDIMs. Let's do this for our three meshes. And now it's time to go into Maya and render our product. I'm gonna open a look dev scene that I set up where I've got a nice calibrated lighting that I use for my look dev scenes and for turntable presentation. For our first workflow, make sure that all the gamma correction settings in our Arnold tab are set to 1 as we are gonna use Maya's color management. Make sure that you are in Rec 709 in the viewer and rendering in linear. This is all done in the preferences of Maya. This is useful if you are using your own color management or CIO like we do at the mill and in all the big film companies. But for the purpose of this video, I will set it to Rec 709 for classic linear workflow. Let's import our original non-combined mesh. I'm just going to scale it down and put it under an animated locator for turnarounds so we can easily see multiple angles of the object. Right, let's open our hypershade. Let's select all our geometry and assign an AI standard. The power of Didu and the map it outputs is that you can have only one shader assigned to all your objects and have completely different type of materials within the same shader. Considering you did a good job in Didu and achieved the result you wanted, you won't have to tweak the shaders in Maya at all. Let's just do a test with a middle grey at 18% and rotate the object slightly. Now, let's load our first map. We will import the diffuse map that we will plug into the diffuse color of the AI standard. Now we can see that our texture is not applied correctly to the mesh. This is because of the UDIMs, but because we named all our maps correctly since the beginning with the corresponding UDIM, we can just set the UV tiling mode in Maya to UDIM and generate a preview. And this will both fix the viewport preview and it will tell Arnold to use the UDIM attributes at render time. This is my workflow for using UDIMs with Quixel. Let's do a render test in Arnold to make sure the UDIMs are working correctly. Let's duplicate our diffuse map and load the other maps using the same process. Note that all our weight sliders are going to be set to 1 as the weight of the shader components will be determined into the luminance values of the map as per PBR workflow. The maps we will need will be the diffuse color, the spec color, the roughness, the Fresnel reflectance are normal and the normal map. As Arnold doesn't support Maya's color space attribute, we will have to make sure it uses the correct part of the map. Note that for the Fresnel reflectance at normal and the roughness, we will have to come and check alpha's luminance in the file node for it to correctly interpret the map as scalar. Check Fresnel on to enable the reflectance at normal slider and plug your map. Let's bring our normal map and set the bump node to tangent space. Now let's do a render. Et voilà! For optimization purposes, I really encourage you to convert your texture files to TX files as this will make your render much faster. Now we can notice that we have some transparent plastic part to our coffee machine. For this, we are simply going to duplicate our shader with keeping existing connection on, assign this shader to the transparent object and add some refraction to it. Make sure that transparent objects have opaque turned off in their shape settings Otherwise, Arnold will not interpret them as transparent.
Let's load the IPL and add some refraction to our shader. Et voilà! Let's make this milk look more like milk using a good old AI standard with some SSS to simulate light shining through it. Now, I'm not too happy with the color of the main body, so let's go back to Didu, tweak the diffuse color and re-export the map. Let's re-render in our node to see the changes. Now we have our coffee machine looking really nice in our node using UDIMS textured in Didu. Now that we've covered the Arnold linear and Maya color management workflow, let's cover the Arnold sRGB profile using the Arnold gamma correction. Let's turn off the Maya color management and put the Arnold gamma correction to 2.2. In this tutorial, we will not put the shaders at 2.2 because that will gamma correct the Maya color pots that we already corrected with the color management because that would do double color correction. But if you were to start your project without the color management, you wouldn't have any problems and could put the shaders at 2.2 as well and do all your color pots like that. So now, let's just replace our linear maps with the sRGB ones. Et voilà. Let's save and compare both renders now. They should be identical. In this case, I'm having a few differences due to my scene being set up for color management workflow and because of the fact that I didn't actually explore the maps at the same time. But as you can see, nothing too major. Now, here's a comped turntable of the coffee machine. So this is it for me, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something today and I wish you a lot of didu action. Goodbye.